Chapter 7, Learning Objective 4. Explain, calculate, and record estimated uncollectible accounts receivable and subsequent write-offs and recoveries. Accounts receivable begins with a credit sale on account to a creditworthy customer and is completed with the collection of cash. Not all receivables are collected, however, so estimates of uncollectible accounts or bad debts must be calculated and recorded as an expense associated with selling on credit. As part of accounting for uncollectible accounts, bad debt expense must be matched to the credit sales of the same period based on the process of estimating the amount of credit sales that will not be collected. An allowance account, called an Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, or AFDA, is established to record estimated uncollectible receivables, followed by an adjusting entry, usually at the end of each reporting period. This account is a contra-asset account to accounts receivable and is disclosed on the balance sheet like this. There are two ways we can actually disclose the net accounts receivable on the balance sheet. First, we can show the gross accounts receivable balance of $25,000 and then include a line that deducts the $1,400 in AFDA to report a net balance of $23,600. Alternatively, we can achieve this in one line by including the amount of the allowance in parentheses and then report the net amount of $23,600. There would likely be a note in the financial statements providing more details including the gross accounts receivable and the policies involved in estimating allowances for doubtful accounts. Bad debts are accounted for using the allowance approach, and the AFDA account is an allowance account. This is applied either using the income statement method or balance sheet method. In the income statement method, bad debts are estimated based on applying an estimated loss percentage to credit sales for the period and that percentage is often based on actual losses from prior years. Here's some historical data for us to work with. For the years 2020 through 2022, we have credit sales and the amounts not collected in each of those years. From that information, we can determine that the average loss over the three-year period is $3,000 divided by $600,000, which equals one half of 1% or 0.5%. If the 2023 credit sales are $300,000, then the estimated bad debt would be $1,500, $300,000 times 0 0.005. Note that the income statement method gives us no consideration to any existing balance in the AFDA account. And we'll see why this is important in a few minutes. The 2023 adjusting entry to record the allowance includes a debit to bad debt expense of $1,500 and a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts from the AFDA of $1,500. Here we can see the impact on the balance sheet using a T account for the AFDA. The AFDA balance before the adjustment is $250 on the credit side. Remember, the normal balance of the AFDA account is a credit. The adjustment adds another $1,500 on the credit side, resulting in an adjusted balance of $1,750 at the end of the period. An alternative method is the balance sheet method, whereby estimated bad debts are based on applying various estimated loss percentages to accounts receivable that are aged or group into categories based on the number of days unpaid. The categories with higher numbers of days not paid are assigned a higher percentage based on the higher risk of not being collected. Here's an example of the aging of accounts receivable where we list all of our customers and the aging categories, which include accounts receivable balances that are up to 30 days old, 31 to 60 days old, etc. Then the company develops an estimated percentage of uncollectability for each of those aging categories. For example, the company estimates that half a percent of balances not yet due could be uncollectible, 3% of receivables between 31 and 60 days are estimated to be uncollectible, all the way to 40% for receivables over 120 days. As you would expect, the estimated percentage of uncollectible accounts increases as the uncollected receivables get older. The determination of the percentages applied are based on past experience. If we now apply those percentages to the aging totals, we can see that the estimated uncollectible amounts for receivables between 1 to 30 days is $100, calculated as $10,000 times 1%. We have $100 in estimated uncollectibles for the 61 to 90 day aging, calculated as $2,000 times 5%. 
all the way up to $400 for amounts over 120 days calculated at $1,000 in aged accounts receivable over 120 days times 40%. You should pause the video to ensure you can confirm all of these amounts, which then add up to a total of $1,450. Now this next step is very important. This $1,450 amount is not the bad debt expense, but rather the ending balance in the AFDA account. So if we set up the T account for AFDA, we see the beginning balance before any adjustments is $250. Then in our T account, the $1,450 amount we just calculated becomes the ending balance. This means we have to plug the T account to resolve the change from $250 to $1,450, which is a difference of $1,200. This is the bad debt expense. And we record it with this entry, which includes a debit to bad debt expense of $1,200, and a credit to AFDA of $1,200 to end up with the correct balance. A simplified balance sheet method would apply a single percentage to the ending accounts receivable balance. For example, if the AFDA account unadjusted balance was $250 on the credit side, and the accounts receivable balance was $25,000 as before, if the estimated loss percentage was 6% of total accounts receivable, then the ending AFDA balance would be $1,500. $25,000 times 6%, and the adjusting entry amount would have to be $1,250. There's the ending balance of $1,500 minus the beginning balance of $250. In this case, the journal entry would include a $1,250 debit to bad debt expense and associated credit to AFDA. Another element of accounting for uncollectible accounts includes writing off an account receivable once it's been determined by management that a specific account receivable is not collectible. It must then be removed from the accounts, and this is called a write-off. For example, let's say on January 15, 2024, the $1,000 account receivable for Bendix Inc., illustrated earlier, is deemed to be uncollectible by management. The entry to remove the account includes a debit to the AFDA account to decrease the allowance for the $1,000 amount that is not collectible, and a credit to accounts receivable for the same amount to actually remove the receivable from the accounting records or subledger. Note that since these two accounts net together on the balance sheet, it makes sense that there is no change in the net accounts receivable balance reported on the balance sheet. If the AFDA account unadjusted opening balance was $250 credit as before, after the write-off, this account would be in a temporary debit balance position. $250 minus the $1,000 write-off is $750. Now, if the balance sheet method is used to estimate bad debt expense, the adjusting entry amount will also change. So, for example, assume a $250 credit balance in the AFDA account and the $1,000 write-off. At the end of the period, a 6% loss percentage is applied to the $25,000 accounts receivable balance, resulting in an ending AFDA balance requirement of $1,500. And here's what this looks like using the T account. We start with the 250 credit balance at the beginning. Then we have the write-off, which debits the account by $1,000 and puts the AFDA account temporarily into a debit position. If the ending balance is supposed to be $1,500, then the bad debt expense necessary is the $1,500 ending balance plus the existing debit balance of $750 for a total of $2,250. Sometimes, a previously written off account receivable can be fully or even partially collected, and we call this a recovery. For example, let's say Bendex Inc. subsequently paid $500 of the $1,000 account written off. The entry required for this recovery comes in two steps. First, we have to put the collected portion of the written off account back into accounts receivable with a debit to accounts receivable and credit to AFDA for $500. Then we record the collection with a debit to cash and credit to accounts receivable for $500. Now you might be wondering, well, why don't we just debit cash and credit AFDA since the debit and credit to accounts receivable balance each other out? Well, the answer to that is, while the result is the same, the proper way to record a recovery of accounts receivable is with the two-step approach to produce a proper audit trail.